baby. You're watching the Brawler Sports Boxing Show Podcast. Starring CEO Rick Muhammad. The Brawler Sports Boxing Show Podcast. Let's go check. Yo, what's up, boxing fans? It's your boy Rick Muhammad, Brawler Sports Media in the building. This is the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. This past weekend, we had Daniel, the Miracle Man, Jacobs taking on uh, Ryder. A lot of people feel like Jacobs won that fight. But I feel like, you know, certain fights fight fighters get up for certain fights. And I felt like in that fight, that wasn't a fight that Jacobs got up for. That was this past Saturday night at the Alexandra Palace in London. Uh, for the first half of the fight, first six rounds, Jacobs won with ease, dominated the fight. Round seven, Ryder woke up. Seventh, eighth, and ninth was good rounds for him. Great comeback rounds. Uh, he, he started landing some, some pretty good shots on uh, the Miracle Man. However, 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds, those last three rounds in this uh, eliminate about, they were, they were kind of, you know, iffy. It could have went either way. So it was still a pretty close fight at the end of that fight. But I think Jacobs could have pulled it out had he done a little bit more in those last three rounds. Not having done that cost him uh, that eliminated bout and Ryder would move on to fight uh, for a super middleweight championship of the world, which everybody is looking for a fight with Canelo. All right, so that's that's one. Two, we have some interesting information that uh, uh, Jamal Charlo uh, was arrested or allegedly, allegedly attacking a family member, if you will, by either pushing uh, or grabbing or hitting. Uh, but his lawyers came back and said, hey, this is just a shakedown from a family member that's trying to get paid and it's not going to happen. Uh, so we shall see how that all pans out in court. He made bail. He's out of jail. So once they uh, go to court, they'll figure out, you know, what the details are, uh, what's to be true, not true, hearsay. Uh, but good luck to him on that. Uh, what else we got here going on? You got uh, Haney, uh, WBC lightweight champion Devin Haney and the undisputed champ uh, Camboso, George Camboso. That fight doesn't look like it's going to happen as both parties cannot seem to agree and come up with some happy medium uh, that they feel that, that's good for them. I can already tell you it's a money issue. It, 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 all these fights are money issues. And Haney only has the one belt. George Com Camboso, he's provenly beat the best, the killer in the division, which was Tio Loma, uh, uh, Loma, Tio Fimo Lopez, who beat Lomachenko. So... Cambosa definitely should get the bigger split of the money. He's carrying, you know, all of the belts except one. So also they're saying that because Haney hasn't accepted to get the vaccination, uh, that's another issue. As you know, they banned, uh, what's his name, uh, the foreign tennis player in, in uh, one of those countries. They banned him from competing because he refused to get the vaccination as well. So that probably had a lot to do with this fight not happening as well. So I don't I don't see that coming around on the money side. And if Devin Haney's uh, solid in his decisions and his beliefs and why he doesn't want to get the vaccination, I'm sure he'll continue to not want to get it. And so that fight probably won't. We probably won't see that fight no time soon, guys. Uh, moving right along, what else we got here? Uh, of course, we all waiting to hear uh, uh, what what what's going to be. The outcome of the uh, upcoming Earl Spence Jr. and Ugas fight April 16th in Arlington, uh, Texas. That's going to be at Cowboy Stadium. I don't know what fighter. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys feel that uh, Earl the Troop Spence is the same fighter he was before the accident? That's hard to say yes to. In my opinion, I, I can't say yes to that because we don't really know. Yeah, he fought Danny Garcia. That was a safe fight for him. They knew that that would be a safe comeback fight and a name in the elite top welterweights in that division. So anyone wouldn't be able to doubt that. Like, oh, he didn't take some bum, some scrub. He fought Danny Garcia. So, but I don't think Earl Spence is the same fighter he was before that horrific car accident. Big fan of Earl. Always have been. I was there when he fought his pro debut at Fantasy Springs uh, Casino in California there. Uh... Big fan. I know his trainer, uh, my man Derek James. 
But I'm, I, I would definitely have to wait and see how this fight pans out on the 16th of April. Uh, then he, he, he missed out making the big money Bucks fight versus uh, Manny Pacquiao with the eye injury. You know, I just feel like when your body's been turned upside down, flipped, twisted, thrown out of a windshield at, you know, abnormal speeds, upwards of close to 100 miles an hour in a foreign race car, it just seems like the body is somewhat fragile and, and deeply damaged and injured inside internally. But I could be wrong. We shall see on April 16th. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, there still talks about whether or not uh, former heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder, is considering retiring or coming back to continue to fight. Uh, I've heard that he's probably going to do some type of a, some type of retreat, you know, where he can go and, and be into himself, meditate, because uh, he does that anyway. That's the kind of that's the kind of guy uh, Deontay is. He, he does a lot of that on his own self, you know, get himself some some private time, uh, some Deontay time, if you will. Uh, and I'm probably, you know, he'll probably take a trip or something like that and go and find himself and see if his purpose is still in the sport of boxing or does he move on to retirement and, and indulge in more business ventures that he's involved in right now and whatever those endeavors are. But that remains to be seen. Everybody would love to see him and uh, Anthony Joshua fight. Uh, as we see, he's not going to be fighting uh, Fury no time soon since he supposedly took the step aside money for Usyk and Fury to fight. But since AJ has lost to uh, twice now, Usyk and or Andy, Roti Andy Ruiz, and Deontay Wilder has lost twice to, to uh, Fury, I think that's a good fight for Wilder to come back and fight Anthony Joshua. That's the fight we all wanted to see anyway uh, before Joshua agreed to fight. Tyson Fury or agreed to fight Andy Ruiz. We wanted to see, you know, Wilder and Anthony Joshua. That was the big, that was the big trash talking fight that everybody was saying this was going to be the mega fight of the heavyweights. But hey, they didn't they didn't disappoint us in that trilogy. Uh, you know, the trilogy fight versus uh, you know, Fury Wilder three. That was that was awesome. That was great for the heavyweight uh division. And and it, and it led up and held up to its own. What else we got coming up? Uh, Neri. Neri still winning, doing his thing. What else? What else, guys? What do you got? What is your thoughts on this this thing about uh, Showtime Sean Porter? Before he retired, when he was still currently an active fighter, stated that Boots Ennis was the real deal. He was the truth and the future. And that he himself, I... Showtime Sean Porter, I do not want to fight him. That's how, you know, awesome of a fighter I think he is. Now, since he's retired, it seems that uh, Showtime Sean Porter made a statement saying, hey, Boots is overrated. You know, he's not the fighter you guys think he is, and he won't be a world champion, blah, 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 something to that effect. So now Boots caught wind of that and say, hey, okay. Keep that same energy. Hey, if you feel that way, why don't you come on out of retirement and show everybody my overratedness and take that away from me? Hmm. That was a good call out. So I don't know if that's going to entice Sean Porter. If I was Sean Porter, I wouldn't indulge. I'd stay retired, keep doing my Fox commentating, the analyst job, and keep it moving and enjoying retirement. Because uh, I personally know in, in my own personal opinion, that Boots would probably slaughter him for real, for real. Let's just keep it a, a hundred here. So that's what's going on uh, so far here in the boxing world, guys. And uh, I'm looking forward, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, Spence versus Ugas. And then we can go from there. And like I said, hopefully uh, Jamal Charlo, Charlo uh, gets cleared of whatever these uh, rumors or accusations are from whatever family member it is. That, that may be trying to extort him uh, for money. And it's, it's possible because family is the worst, as is friends. <laughs> Seen this happen a lot in boxing. So it is what it is. But that's what's going on right now in the boxing world. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Keep your praise. You know, it's 2022. Hopefully we got some really, really big fights coming up. 
Lomachenko. Let's see what's going to happen with that. Let's see what uh, Devin Haney's going to do. What is Tank going to do? Oh, yeah. We, let's talk about something real quick before I let you guys go. Eddie Reynoso was supposed to have been tapped to be the head trainer for Ryan Garcia. Since then, Ryan Garcia has pulled away from Eddie Reynoso now and don't know what that was all about, but. Brawlers, Brawlers baby. Brawlers.